Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and this is SiliconANGLE Wikibon's production. We are here at MIT. I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Kelly. Jeff, I'm very excited to be here, again, working with you side by side. Last summer, we started a collaboration with MIT at the Chief Data Officer Symposium, and uh, we really hit it off with the folks at MIT. We thought they were really smart. I think they thought we were kind of cool, so we're now bringing theCUBE to a number of uh, MIT events this year. We're here at the MIT Media Lab, right across the river, and our background is Boston. This is the fourth ECIR workshop. ECIR is Explorations in Cyber International Relations. And the topic of this event is cybersecurity and the governance gap, complexity, contention, and cooperation. So let me set it up for you. So cyberspace used to be really low politics, kind of a backroom uh, activity, not really front and center. Well, over the past two decades, cyberspace has essentially encompassed every part of our lives. And the impact of cyberspace and security has begun to seep into and bleed into international relations and geopolitics. So that essentially is what this conference is really all about. Uh, the conference started out, uh, as, as I said, four years ago, really trying to just organize uh, the uh, individuals in this space, a lot of the good thinkers, and, and now bringing together the whole notion of governance, the lack really of governance in any kind of institutions around cyberspace. Um, we have a, a great lineup today of, of guests uh, that we're going to be running through talking about these issues, talking about the impact, impact on, on geopolitics, and specifically how the internet and, and its rise has really outpaced the ability of the world to really govern uh, around this 21st century reality. Uh, Jeff Kelly, you were in the keynotes this morning. Um, what'd you think? What'd you take? Well, it's, it's interesting, although maybe not surprising, when you think about the way the internet has developed. Um, and this is true, really, of any new innovative technology. Um, you know, rules and, and governance uh, is not always top of mind when things are starting to be developed. Um, and really, we've gotten to the point now where uh, we're about 20 years into kind of the world, world of the World Wide Web and the internet, uh, which really impacts every part of our lives. Uh, we're about 20 years in, into that uh, evolution right now, and, and currently it's, it's a little frightening if you think about the lack of governance and standards around things like security in cyberspace. Um, some of the speakers in the keynotes this morning pointed out that you know, the U.S. has a very fragmented uh, approach to governing uh, cyberspace. Um, that's one problem. Another, of course, is that it's U.S. dominated, and where cyberspace doesn't, under, doesn't uh, recognize borders, uh, but it's very much a U.S. Uh, dominated governance structure. Because that of ICON, there is. right? Really, right. As, 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 as one of the reasons, right? Because I mean, ICON, is a, it's a, as, as the president, uh, pointed, president of ICON pointed out, it's a, it's a U.S. corporation um, based in California, and it's focused, uh, you know, initially focused on... Um, well, it's a nonprofit that's essentially controlled by the U.S. Exactly. You know, so its literally. priorities... I say controlled by. I mean, essentially, they've got to get permission to do pretty much anything to, through the U.S. Right. government. And so, therefore, its priorities are going to be U.S.-centric. Um, and, and that creates the perception, whether it's real or not, but there's probably some truth to it, that, that companies like Google and Facebook and other U.S. companies are able to get a, a competitive advantage on the global market. Well, th that's one reason, but I think the other reason is, of course, when you've got these, when the, when the major global internet players are U.S.-based, they're going to look after their own best interests, and it's not, under, it's not uh, surprising in that sense that um, some of the uh, focus areas around governance are going to be uh, focused on issues that are important to them. Well, and we heard, um, and, and there's been a lot of talk in the, in the IT industry for a while now about, you know, the different inter internets, you know, the, the China internet, hmm. the German internet. We heard uh, a, a situation where uh, a Angela Merkel was uh, listening to Deutsche Telekom propose the, the German internet, and she was very intrigued. So this essentially, we're talking about, f you know, forking the internet, which nobody wants, because uh, obviously, well, I say nobody wants. Well, globally, from an economic standpoint, that would not be advantageous. But so from a from a narrow perspective, you could see why a country like Germany might want a German uh, internet, or or ch certainly China uh, would want a, a China internet. Well, you know, I think uh, so. We heard from Joseph Nye this morning, um, you know, famous and, and well-known professor at, at Harvard uh, around uh, international relations, and he talked about, you know, when you're talking about security, uh, you've got to balance that, of course, with other priorities and other values. Um, so, you know, there are there there can be a case made like liberty, well, liberty, <laughs> freedom, innovation, <laughs> commerce. Um, Speed, so, agility. Right, so, you know, there are going to be some... All those things that drive economic value. Right, so <laughs> the idea that, uh, that, that you could fragment the Internet, and we'll have a Chinese Internet and a German Internet and a U.S. Internet, you know, that's one way potentially to uh, mitigate some of the risks, but at what... Uh, 
what does that do in terms of the other values and other priorities that we have around commerce and security and freedom, et cetera? So, uh, you know, there's all different ways to approach this, and I think what really struck me in that keynote is that we are at very early stages of this. There are, uh, as I mentioned, there are a number of organizations like ICANN and uh, others that are focused on governing different aspects of cyberspace, but there really is no kind of, uh, as one of the speakers this morning put it, a hierarchical uh, overall uh, governance regime that kind of governs the, uh, the totality of cyberspace. Um, so some of the questions are how do we get to that point? Or do we want to get to that point? Is it going to be just one organization? Does it need to be a multilateral approach like we heard from some of our, uh, some of the keynote speakers this morning? So, um, you know, there's a lot of questions uh, that remain to be answered around uh, security and governance uh, in cyberspace. We're going to talk about that today, of course. Uh, and there's, as I said, we, there's all different uh, ways we can go about this, Dave. And uh, it, it all depends on your perspective. Um, we have come at this from a very US-centric perspective for the most part up until now, uh, but we're starting to hear from more uh, other parts of the world that are very interested in this, and uh, it'll be interesting today to, to well, see how this plays out. The physical and the, and the logical worlds, Jeff, are, are coming together. They're, they're colliding in a way. I mean, and then you see all kinds of examples, certainly uh, WikiLeaks, the Arab Spring, the impact of, of social. I mean, on theCUBE we always talk about cloud, mobile, social, and, and big data, and they're all enabled by, by cyberspace. So um, we are here, we're at MIT, this is theCUBE. We, we, we come to you at these events, we extract the signal from the noise, we bring the best guests that are at these events, and this is a um, very high level of thinking at this event. I mean, a lot of times at theCUBE we're talking deep tech. This really is not a tech conference. It's really one about policy and, and international impacts of, of cyberspace, and it's my pleasure to bring on Charlie Sennett. Charles Sennett is the founder, one of the, one of the founders and the editor at large of the Global Post, uh, phenomenal worldwide news organizations. Charlie, welcome to theCUBE. Great to see you. And so, um, you were in the session this morning. I mean, Charlie, in a lot of ways, this is in, in your wheelhouse. I mean, we heard about, you know, Brazil essentially m making a move to the middle. I mean, I'm reminded of politics, right? Everybody wants them to, be, to be in the middle. Um, <laughs> that's right. And, uh, and, and the, 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 the U.S. dominance, um, you've certainly tracked, I mean, you know, firsthand the Arab Spring. You saw the role of, of social media, of, of, of Twitter, of cyberspace. So. For, again, welcome. What do you make of uh, what you heard this morning? I think it's, it's so interesting to know that there is this global debate going on on governance and how the world is going to um, govern the internet. And it's one that we're not paying enough attention to. We in the, in the, in the media, we're not looking at this. This is, a, this is an eye-opening conference where I really see a lot happening internationally in terms of diplomacy, in terms of uh, the corporate world looking at this. But for me, as, a, as someone who's covered a lot of conflict, I thought the opening statement by Joe Nye, this is the former Admiral Joe Nye, now at the Kennedy School, distinguished professor. Joe said we need to tone down the rhetoric on cyber war, cyber conflict, and think about this more uh, in a more complex way, in a more nuanced way, about that there are definite rising security threats that come with, 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 with cyber space and with all of the potential that's in it for disruption of governance, of corporate America, the Snowden effect, right? We really have this sense that things could, could, could put forward some peril for our country. But we also have great opportunity, as he pointed out, and, and a great need now to think through governance. So I thought his sense of creating some level of toning down the rhetoric and focusing more on how are we going to create governance was a great opening. Yeah, and he talked about the pendulum swinging back, and it, it, it really is a trade-off. Uh, Jeff and I were just talking about it. I mean, more security means less agility, less freedom, less, less liberty, maybe less economic value, but of course, lower risk as well. And right. so that's something that Joe talked about. You know, he went back, he gave an example of uh, you know, Pearl Harbor, and we could probably, I'm sure we could go back thousands of years in history of, of similar situations. Uh, it was also interesting to hear the president of ICON, uh, Fadi Chahade, talk about the U.S. dominance yeah. uh, in, in, in cyberspace. And um, you know, from our standpoint, you know, the Cube, we, we cover enterprise tech, and you see you know, Google and Facebook and Twitter and, and the likes of you know, uh, others, uh, historically IBM and, 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 and HP and others, the ascendancy of these U.S. companies, there's, there's a perception out there that y the U.S. Is, is sort of, the deck is stacked mm -hmm. in favor mm -hmm. of, of the U.S. and I'm so certain some of that is, is real and some of that is, is just perception, but that was kind of new news to me. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, I think this, this conference highlights um, a dialogue happening around the world where people do feel that ICANN has 
um, a sort of US-centric dominance of the internet inherent in its structures. I think even, even the president uh, of ICANN was saying we need to rethink this, that this is not sustainable, that the perception of US control is not a sustainable system for governance, that they're going to have to open it up, they're going to have to be more inclusive and in bringing a lot of voices around the world into thinking through a new model for governance. That's news. I, I, I'm in the business of news. I, I think there's a lot of news unfolding here. And he talked about uh, Brazil as sort of the, the middle ground. Right. Um, and he said there were a number of factors that went into that and some, some deep analysis that, that he didn't have time to go into. Well, why Brazil? Obviously a big country. Yep. Uh, it's you know, technologically savvy. Uh, but what, why Brazil? I'm, I'm What's going on in Brazil? I'm very interested in the metrics for how they determined that Brazil was the core of the center. And he didn't tell us that, right? He said, <laughs> we had a very complex set of metrics. I won't go into it. I'd love to know that. I think the obvious elements would be that it's one of the world's fastest growing economies, that it absolutely represents the global south and all of its sophistication and its challenges and its great successes. Um, this, is, this is very much a time when Brazil is ascendant economically, culturally. I think there's just a lot happening in Brazil. It's also always been a very independent country. And I was joking about the non-aligned states going back to the Cold War, there was the emergence of the non-aligned states, India sort of being at the center of that. Um, I think Brazil is a new version of a digital age non-aligned state with a lot of potential for growth, a lot of interesting things happening. And I think it's very wise to hear that, um, that there's this courting of the middle going on. Very smart, but a lot to learn about how they figured out it's Brazil. And then uh, Jeff Kelly, of course, you were in the room too. The, the, the analogy that Joseph and I made with the, pr the progression of governance around the you know, n n nuclear proliferation was, was interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we're in decade two now of that, right? Right, he, yeah, he pointed out it took about two decades from uh, really the, uh, the dawn of the nuclear age to, to get to this conversation about security as it relates to governance. And we're getting to that point now. We're about two, about two decades in. Um, so Charlie, but I'd like to ask you, one, one of the things they pointed out, and I think kind of stepping back a little bit, so we talked about, and you just mentioned, this US-centric view or, of a role in terms of governance, governance and security in cyberspace is unsustainable. Mm -hmm. Let's just take that statement and, and unpack that a little bit. Why sure. is that unsustainable? Why is a US-dominated um, governance architecture or, or a paradigm really unsustainable uh, as we start to evolve yeah. now into the third decade of, I guess, what you call the uh, internet age? Well, I think Fadi Chahadi, who, was, who is the president of, of ICANN, was explaining that, and, and he himself was saying it's not sustainable. He, as the man who is the president of, of ICANN, is saying the model that he is over presiding over is not sustainable because the internet is about connecting the world. It is the World Wide Web. And if we're going to have the World Wide Web reflect a collective sense of governance, we're going to have to be more inclusive. So I think it's practically unsustainable. I think it's also physically unsustainable because you now have a clamoring from Russia and from China for other root systems to come into the internet. And it, as, as uh, Fadi was pointing out, if that happens, you could really begin to see a collapse of, of the internet as we know it, and that could have a tremendous economic impact mm -hmm. on global economy. So I think <coughs> lots at stake here to figure this out. I think there's a sense of urgency in the room that we're hearing about a need to really think this through in some new ways. So I want to bring that back to the, the analogy that jo jo Joseph Nye was making about the, <coughs> you know, what we can learn from the, the nuclear age. So uh, there was the threat of mutual destruction that you know, the United States and the Soviet Union yeah. basically were sort of you know, monitoring things. But if, that's, if that analogy holds true, the things are going to get a lot more complex. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. right? You've got <laughs> God Pakistan forbid we're in India, a new Cold War. You've got North Korea. Age. You've got Iran. You, you've, sure. you, you've got Israel. I mean, and, and I think, so, I think what do you make of that uh, parallel? I think it's. A, I think it's a. Uh, it's a. It's. It's a troubling parallel. But I think we have to. We have to balance it with the great opportunity that's presented to us in coming up with a new structure of governance, which is that you can have a place where the world really can come together. Think of the opportunities here for cross-cultural learning, you know, for all of the things that are on the positive side of the ledger of how countries communicate with each other, rather than the negative side, which is war and competition and, and undercutting each other and looking to, around the world to get the upper hand. There's also tremendous openings for us to communicate in ways we never have before. So I think there's a, there's a lot at risk in this moment 
of figuring out a new governance that embraces the great possibilities of the web and doesn't just focus, as Joe and I pointed out, I think really importantly, that we don't use this rhetoric of cyber war and cyber conflict and get lost down a retro road of the past. What we're talking about is a new future and we really need to capitalize Well, and a lot of that is economic, right, driven, and, but you heard the story uh, of uh, uh, Deutsche Telekom proposing a German yeah, right. internet and well, you Angela can see Merkel why going, oh, hey, that sounds good. <laughs> you can see why Merkel <laughs> so might be upset. Forking the internet, I mean, you right. Can, you, yeah. can, you can sure. absolutely see. So as you travel around the world, do you get that sense of, of friction, maybe even animosity toward the I US think, dominance? I think in the, in the post 9-11 era, in which you had a tremendous isolation of the United States, particularly under the presidency of George Bush with the war in Iraq, the U.S. went from the great famous headline in France of we are all American now right after 9-11. Remember that? The morning sure. after 9-11, we are all now Americans. A chance for us to have the world really really see that we were under attack and, that, and, and support from the world turned into the war in Iraq, turned into the transatlantic divide like we've never seen it. Millions of people in Europe protesting the U.S. Then along comes President Obama, who apparently is going to change that dynamic and suddenly talk about the U.S. and its ability to really bring the world together. We feel like we hit the reset button with the world, but <laughs> in five short years, I'd say we're yeah. right back to tremendous animosity toward the United States on a lot of different levels, but I think the Snowden effect is crucial among them. That the U.S. has preached uh, from a very lofty position for a long time about the surveillance strategies used by China, the former Soviet Union, and now Russia, and we look pretty hollow in our arguments given some of the WikiLeaks that have come out, particularly the, the leaks that Snowden created on how we have done our own surveillance. That's why Angela Tough to Merkel take the is high moral ground, That's why it? Angela Merkel's <laughs> upset and that's why yeah. she's thinking about rerouting. Very interesting just to note that the um, that they were talking here, these experts were talking about how world leaders like Angela Merkel and even presumably in Washington that they are not equipped to make these complex decisions on what is the future of governance, that there's a real need for, for some very rapid cramming to go on and a, and a very great learning curve for our world leaders if they're going to really play a practical and productive part of thinking through uh, the new government. And, and the knowledge may be in the U.S., but the coordination isn't. All right, we're going to be unpacking these and other issues. Uh, we're live here at the MIT Media Lab. Uh, this is uh, Dave Vellante. Charlie Sennett will be back throughout the day, as will Jeff Kelly. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE.